that when I go to the beach, people hire me for shade. In my world, gravy's a beverage. My cereal bowl's got a lifeguard. If I don't sweat, I'll explode. I'm really serious. I'll blow the hell up. <laughs> okay, I'm fat. I admit it. Well, I don't have to admit it. You can see that. And don't think I haven't heard or used every single one of those fat jokes and more. My size has provided me with a living, and now it's killing me. I'm Frank Payne, the big guy, obviously. I'm an actor, writer, and comedian, and I'm a man who is morbidly obese, which means I'm more than 100 pounds overweight. I've decided to loan my body to science and take you inside, deep inside my big fat body. I'm gonna let doctors and scientists, using the latest in imaging technology, show you what happens to the human body, my body, when it becomes morbidly obese. Since I'm willing to bear all, here's what you're looking at. I'm five feet, 10 inches tall, and 363 pounds. My waist is 60 inches, which means I'm five feet around the middle. I wear a 5X, and with this gut, I never wear anything tucked in. At this point, you gotta be wondering how someone like me gets to be this fat in the first place. Let me show you how and what I eat in 24 hours. What can I get for you today? Uh, I'll take four double cheeseburgers. I always like to order big enough where they think I'm ordering for a family, so that way it's not like, oh man, that fat guy just ordered all that for himself. You know, I don't limit myself to three meals a day. Over at 24-hour period, I'm more of a continual, constant grazer. I'd like to get an eight-piece chicken only. drive throughs give you a little bit of anonymity. I don't like uh, really sitting down in restaurants too much because you don't want to be the fat guy there. You know, you don't want to be the biggest guy in the restaurant. Now I'm happy. I got chicken. The only reason I get any exercise is because the upstairs apartment was the only one available. And when I sit down, I can polish off a few pounds of food in just seven minutes. After burgers, fried chicken, and ice cream, you might think I'm done, but I'm not. This is not a reenactment. I really do order like this. Your extra large, uh, how many does that serve? Three to four, okay. Well, I'm gonna need two of them then. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple of other people here. And uh, what is this uh, Nick sandwich? Okay. Well, I want that for me. Uh, that'll be mine. <laughs> By now, I know what you're thinking. How can he eat like that? Which is why I do it in secret. It sounds pathetic, but food has become my best friend. It's comforting. It never talks back to you. Uh, it tells you you're OK. But I know deep down, I'm not OK. Mm. I'm 46 years old, and I can't live like this anymore. I'm taking the first big step, getting a physical. Just relax, it's okay. really not very difficult. We will not make you run more than you really can. Run? Walk. Okay. <laughs> Let's be realistic really here. Wow, the blood pressure is so high. Do you We're take any? Now, yeah. I'm supposed to be taking something. I haven't had my scripture. You're nervous filled. now. Yeah, a little bit. I'm anxious. The doctors put me on a treadmill for a stress test to see if my heart can handle the most basic level of exercise. Walking on a treadmill wasn't too bad. As the incline went up, I felt my heart rate going up, and then it picked up the pace. That's when I started getting shortness of breath. That's where I get a little scared. I'll start choking. I start, like, you know, my neck feels fat, and I can't breathe, and it's a scary place for me. Can you continue? No. There was a time when I actually looked and felt fit, back when I was wrestling in high school. but. That's when I started binge eating. You want to lose weight so you can get down certain weight classes. So I would lose weight, I'd gain weight. I'd come in at the beginning of the season, everyone comes in having to lose weight. And at the end of the season, everyone's like, oh, we can eat again. So it was, it was definitely a feast, you know, a feast and famine. But my problems with eating started long before that. When I was six years old, I lost my little brother, John. He died of leukemia at two and a half. So he was in the hospital most of his life. Even at that young age, we, did, we bonded pretty quick. We're riding with his casket to the graveyard. You know, you never see your parents cry. You can't do anything. It saddens you, you know? I just started eating more. I think that was something I'm looking back on now. It's something I probably did as a, 
uh, or an act of defense maybe or something. I found pleasure from food. A little by little, that weight starts creeping up on you. Before you know, you're 240, 250, 260. And I wasn't admitting it to myself. You know, I, I, would, I would stand in different angles in the mirror and say, OK, or eh, not too bad. You never really feel fat. One day, I thought something was wrong with my heart. I thought I was having a heart attack. And so I went to see the doctor, and uh, I looked over and down on, on my chart, I saw the words morbidly obese. It shocked me, because the doctor didn't tell me. Maybe he assumed I knew. I don't know. But it was, that was kind of uh, scary. It's kind of like, you know, you got the cancer, you know, kind of thing. You got fat. I've decided to do something about it. I agreed to do this show. My first stop is the Westside Medical Imaging Center in Los Angeles, California, where scanning devices will show me what obesity looks like on the inside. This is a state-of-the-art 64 slice CAT scan. Kind of a high-powered x-ray. That's it. Close your eyes, <laughs> okay. Well, when I met Frank, the first impression is, here is somebody who is a ticking time bomb. We're imaging a moving structure. So the heart's in constant motion. And the arteries that sit on the heart are moving. And here we're able to take pictures of a coronary artery that may be two or three millimeters in diameter, we can actually determine whether you have coronary artery disease leading to what we call sudden cardiac death. When I got out of the CAT scan, I knew the results couldn't be good. Dr. Lepore showed me the 64 slice CAT scan image of my heart. The yellow stuff is fat, marbled through my heart like a piece of fatty steak. This is a picture of the coronary artery. See those little speckles of white material? Yeah. Turns out the white stuff is plaque. Kind of like putty that's building up in my arteries and clogging blood flow. The bad news is you have some placking, which is unusual for someone of your age. The other thing that we found is that your pumping chamber, we call the ventricle, is thick. Since the walls of my heart are thick and stiff, it has a harder time pumping blood. He also said my heart is enlarged. That was scary to hear. One of the manifestations of obesity is actually infiltration of the liver by fat cells. You actually do have liver infiltration by fat. I know my liver is supposed to be pink and get rid of toxins, but now with the fat in it, it doesn't work very well. Dr. Lepore told me if it gets worse, my liver could harden, leading to cirrhosis. Or I might need a liver transplant if it fails. If we were to open you up, we would see a lot of gooey fat in your abdomen. And again, what we're more concerned about in terms of, the, of heart disease is what we call the visceral fat. I wouldn't be surprised if someone like you in their 50s were to have some kind of cardiovascular event. Perhaps you may develop a blockage that just causes angina or symptoms or a mm. heart attack. I'm kind of in shock right now, to tell you the truth. I'm kind of blown away. I'm close to having like, I don't, uh, you know, like an anxiety attack, I think. I'm feeling pretty horrible. I'm feeling regretful of my past. You know, it's everything that you were being told by everyone else, you know, by your friends saying, you know, you got to watch that weight. Shouldn't eat three steaks. You don't need six burgers. But I always felt strong enough, mad enough to be able to do that, you know. Let's drink more beer. Let's, let's party harder. Let's, let's you know, uh, I don't need exercise. I can't just deny anymore. I mean, it's coronary heart disease. It's scary. It's not even about me. It's about it's about my mom and dad. They lost one son to a disease. You couldn't do anything about it. I don't want him to lose another. Reality is starting to sink in. I'm Frank Payne, and I'm morbidly obese. I've just seen the damage all this fat has done to my organs. And now, I'm about to get the results of my blood test from Dr. Liddy Hazen, a specialist in morbid obesity. OK, I'm going to weigh you first. OK. By the way, she's 5'3", maybe 100 pounds. In other words, about the size of my right leg. We're going to go into this room. Okay. Your blood test last week showed um, elevated cholesterol, so your cholesterol is 287 when a normal cholesterol should be less than 200. Your bad cholesterol, which is your LDL, 
should be less than uh, 130. Your bad cholesterol is 220. Dr. Hazen says that LDL is the bad cholesterol because it circulates in the blood and slowly builds up in the inner walls of arteries and then turns into plaque. HDL is the good cholesterol. My HDL is 28. It needs to be over 40. We usually look at the ratio of your bad cholesterol to your good cholesterol, and that gives us your heart disease risk factor. And so your ratio shows that you have twice the risk factor of having a heart attack than a normal average individual. It means that you're at risk of having heart disease, stroke, heart attack, OK? OK. Frank is only 46 years old, yet he has the body of a 60 or 70-year-old. I think Frank needed to cope, and so his primary coping mechanism was essentially denial. If he just ignores his health and pretends that he's healthy, then he's able to carry on. Yeah, I knew there was something things were probably were wrong, and uh... <sighs> but there's days you feel great, so you can blow it off. And right now, the weight of this is really crushing down on my, you know, on me. Everything is reversible if you start now to really change and take this seriously and not think of yourself as healthy because nothing's happened to you yet. <laughs> and every decision you make from now on and for the rest of your life has to be a decision for your livelihood and for your health. This really scares me because there's only one person who can fix this, and that's me. Obviously, I know I eat more calories than I burn. I just didn't know how many more. Dr. Hazen set me straight. So this would be Friday night to maybe Saturday night, so maybe one day's consumption of food. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, obviously, just looking at it, just objectively, you know something's off. <laughs> Right. A little bit. So what happens is you eat so fast that you don't even give your body a chance to listen to the cues that are coming from your brain and telling you to stop. We have a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin is actually made in your stomach. And ghrelin increases before meals. So as you get hungry, ghrelin increases. It's your appetite stimulating hormone. Once you eat, your stomach gets full, your ghrelin decreases. So normally your brain cues would be alerting you to stop eating, but you're completely obliviating them, essentially, and telling your body, I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do, it doesn't matter what you're telling me to do. Correct. So let's do the math. <laughs> I hate math. <laughs> so normally an adult is supposed to consume 2,000 calories a day, if you're physically active. This pizza has 3,100 calories. This pizza has 3,500 calories. So you're already close to 7,000 calories three days worth of food, just with those two pizzas in one sitting. Now, you would also consume four double cheeseburgers. Correct. The calorie content of that is 2680. That sandwich alone is 630 calories. The chicken is 2,900 calories. The ice cream, 2,320 calories. You're consuming 15,150 calories when in a day you're supposed to consume 2,000 calories. It means that from Friday night to Saturday, you're essentially putting on four pounds. So this is four pounds of fat. It's heavy, okay? Oh, wow. It's heavy, fat is heavy. I think I'll give this back to you. <laughs> but you've got a 40 times this. 40 times 40 that? 40 times that is already on your body. So that's what you've got to get rid of. <sighs> It feels like all this fat is literally crushing me. The next set of tests is going to reveal just how true that really is. I was invited by Stanford University to be the first morbidly obese person tested in their world-famous human performance lab. The best athletes on the planet come here to find out how their bodies can perform better. I'm coming here to find out how badly I'm treating mine. Here's a chance to measure very accurately the way that obesity impacts on the body. We are going to start your day off with a DEXA scan. Phil Cuddy starts my testing on a DEXA scan. It's a machine that measures exactly how much muscle, bone, and fat I have in my body. OK, now how long will this take? About three minutes, three plus minutes. I just don't want to miss lunch. OK, so the scanner is going to reposition itself just over your head. Okay. 
Here we go. So what I'm seeing on the screen right now is your skeleton's coming into shape. We're at about your fourth or fifth rib. Because of your excess body mass, your arms are unable to hang naturally at your side. Your shoulders seem to be elevated. You're not able to bring your legs close due to fat mass in the torso, fat mass on the inner thigh. You're not able to be in alignment. Looking at your numbers from today, we have a body composition number of 48.5% body fat percentage. Wow. So of the 363 pounds, almost 49% of that is considered body fat. So what well, that's telling me is half of me is fat. Essentially half of you is fat. I'm at Stanford's world-class human performance lab, where they're testing my body inside out. I was stunned to learn that nearly half my body is fat. 48.5% body fat percentage. Wow. How does it feel to be 50% fat? It's like you're carrying around a dead body on you. Basically, I'm carrying death. It's like you're so far in a hole right now. Can that be fixed? And this is the problem that people that carry a lot of extra weight get into. They need to be more fit to be able to lose weight, but right. they can't get more fit because they don't have the ability to actually move to do that. But that's exactly what they needed me to do next, move. So now we're going to really work you out. We're gonna do a stress test. Because of my morbid obesity, Dr. Ashley, a cardiologist, had to monitor me as I did my next test. I am going to have you hold this here. Okay. This VO2 max test measures how efficiently the body uses oxygen by pushing an athlete to the max. Obviously, there are several problems in my case. I'm way out of shape. Let's do it. We're gonna get you up to a faster walk, and then we're gonna start making it steeper. All right. Climbing mountains. His breathing rate is increasing. <sighs> it's hard to breathe. The fat's run to my lungs, keeps me from being able to breathe deeply and use oxygen efficiently. A little steeper now. Can you go a little faster? Uh, this is challenging him. It's starting to challenge him. My heart can't pump well. It limits how the oxygen is transformed into energy to my muscles. But despite my limitations, I gave it my all. You're doing a really good job. Keep moving. Push, push through. Push through as hard as you can. Keep going. Keep pushing forward. Frank, that was great. You really maxed out on this test. Oh, man. I, I, it's hard to believe. You're not kidding me, are you? No, I'm not kidding you. I did what I could, but he was proud that I had the spirit inside me to push myself to the limit I did. I know that spirit's inside me, and I just got to keep that kindled right now. But because it's easy just to say no and go back to old habits. VO2 max is an evaluation, a gross analysis of your cardiovascular system, how you're using oxygen for exercise. Basically, what he's telling me is that my heart, lungs, and muscles are so stressed by all this fat that my body really can't handle much exercise at all. He has trouble walking, let alone running on a treadmill. He is severely limited. He's limited in the way an 85-year-old would be limited. The next test will show what my weight is doing to my bones and joints. Tor Bezier, a biomechanist, can measure those forces. So we're going to look at the way you walk and move. Okay. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to stick a bunch of these reflective markers uh, onto your different body segments, and we're going to capture the movements in 3D. So what we're interested in understanding is, well, during your general activities of daily living, what kind of loads are on your joints? Right. And if we can understand what type of loads are on the joints, that gives us some better indication of you know, bone and cartilage health, musculoskeletal health, and those type of things. Dressed like a sumo wrestler, once again, I'm the biggest guy in the room. You can tell I'm Irish by the white of my legs. Well, you're going to look like a Christmas tree when this is finished. So we have a motion capture system here. It's called a Vicon system. And that allows us to track the motions of Frank as he's walking along. We also have force plates in the ground. And those force plates then track the reaction forces. You ready? And ready. go. There's Frank hits the ground with his feet, there's an equal and opposite force back from the ground onto him, so we can measure those forces. When you are applying a force to the ground, you can see that on the screen. And go. 
One of the things that matters is the stress in the joint. When you're walking, you experience one to 1.2 times body weight. So for Frank, who's say 360 pounds, that means with every step he takes, there's about 360 pounds of load interacting with his foot. Now, when you go up to the knee joint, they can be two times body weight. So that's 700 pounds of force through his knee. Okay, and the last one we'll do is a slow walk. That's okay. <laughs> you ready? And go. That dead weight, when loaded on the skeleton, puts unusual forces on the joint. The main forces we worry about are those to the cartilage. And the cartilage is that shiny Teflon type substance, similar to what you see on the end of a chicken bone. So once that cartilage is gone, that can produce joint pain symptoms that we call arthritis, osteoarthritis, degenerative arthritis. Your mass is about 50% larger than someone of the same size, which means the stresses in your joints are far greater. Right. So to account for that, you walk slower. So you have less force, less stress on your joints. More weight, slower walk, I mean, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that can change with walking speed is your step length. And that's another thing that you find with people who are overweight is they have much shorter step length. And they also choose to have their feet slightly wider apart. For a comparison, an athlete named James did the same test. This is how my body should move. Here's the difference in our skeletons. I'm the big bone guy on the right. You have slightly more rotation sideways. You have more lateral sway, that trunk sway. Your feet are slightly more side to side. And compared to James, who's walking with a much narrower stance, his arms are, of course, closer to his body as well. You can Whoa. see some dramatic changes. And this is ideally where, we, uh, where we'll head when, when you lose a bit more weight. Like everything else, I would blame joint pain and ankle swelling on old sporting events. No, the reason I'm feeling pain, the reason I'm, I'm not feeling good, the reason my heart palpitates sometimes, the reason I can't walk up a set of stairs without feeling pain is because I'm fat. By this point, I was tired. The next test I faced at the high-tech world of Stanford University would take me into their virtual reality lab. It's really high-end stuff. I mean, it's pretty impressive. I'm Frank. Hi, I'm Jesse, and this is Liz. Welcome to the Virtual Human Interaction Lab. You can have a seat right there. Great. Thank you for agreeing to be a participant today. Yeah, I really don't know what I'm getting into. So. Oh, just you wait. Our lab uses virtual reality technology in novel ways. Typically, the focus has been on the actual technological aspects of the equipment, and instead, we use that as a tool to examine social questions and social issues. Since I was going to be part of an experiment, she had to read the standard protocol rules. Well, inside the virtual world, you're going to be engaging in a simple exercise. As you exercise, you will see your avatar exercise and experience the benefits of your exercise. That is, it will appear to lose weight. When you don't exercise, your avatar will not lose weight. Will it get bigger? It's not going to gain weight, it's just going to lose weight. So I'm going to demonstrate the exercise you'll be doing today. You're going to start with your right leg, lift it up to waist level, and put it back down to the ground. Then you'll move your left leg up to waist level and back down to the ground. So one repetition is a right and a left. So as you exercise like this, you'll see your avatar exercise. This is an HMD, or a head-mounted device. We're going to put this on your head, and this will enable you to actually see the virtual world. So here are two screens, and that's where you'll actually see the world being rendered. Okay. This light right here, we're going to turn that on because that's going to help the HMD be tracked by those four cameras in the corners of the room. All right, Frank, you can open your eyes. Do you see our virtual room? Uh, yes, I do. You turn to your right. OK. And turn to your left. All right, great, you're definitely tracking. I mean, this is like 22nd century stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's real advanced. I had to wear a helmet and see myself in 3D. Frank, that's your face. Wow. It's so weird seeing it without the extra chins. Hey, how you doing there? You're a good looking guy. Go ahead and start whenever you're ready. We immerse him in the virtual environment. So he dons the head-mounted display, the HMD. And when he's in there, what he is seeing is a representation of the room and an appearance of himself. And as he exercises, that virtual self will actually begin to lose weight. So the quicker he exercises, the more intensely he exercises, the faster he sees those results. The rewards of your exercise are shown on your avatar. So as you're lifting your legs, each time you perform a repetition of the exercise, your avatar is actually losing weight. Have you noticed yourself getting any thinner? Yeah, I really do. Uh, it looks like, uh, like a 32-inch waist and 
and the pants are loose. It gives you an inspiration. The more you exercise, you see yourself get thinner and thinner. And the less you exercise, you kind of just you stay there at the same weight. So it, it inspires you to, you know, to see what your future can be and what, what you can do. Wow, this is, this is pretty amazing. I can actually see him losing weight as I'm, as I'm moving. How are you doing there, Frank? You're looking thin. Frank seemed to be having a good time in there as he was exercising, and I could tell he was really noticing the changes in his body. And in the end, when we gave him the option, you know, hey, Frank, you can take a breather, you know, you can sit down, whatever you want to do, he really wanted to get that avatar back into that skinnier version of himself. So he wanted to see that ideal body shape, and he was willing to put forth the extra physical effort it took to get there. We're going to get this avatar moving his butt. I can see the pounds melting off. Yeah, he's losing weight. This is great. This is more of an interactive motivator. It could actually be incorporated as they exercise. As you exercise, you see yourself lose weight. That can help you push out an extra set. It could help you, you know, operate at a different intensity level. It could help you exercise longer. Um, all those things could be immediately beneficial. All right, great, Frank. We're done. I'm going to go ahead and take you out of the virtual world at this point, and we'll talk a little bit about the experiment. Ooh, that was pretty wild. All right, pretty intense, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you feel about your workout? It was great to see myself lose weight. You know, to see it melting off is pretty cool. So did you feel that that made you want to exercise more? Well, yeah, you can see a finished product quicker, you know, and uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm kind of still blown away by it. I mean, it really was uh, kind of quite surprising. With this 3D image, I can see it happen. and I can see uh, my waist coming in a bit. It's coming off, it's coming off. and. Sometimes you doubt it, you know, you, you, you want to believe it, but you, you know, you're like, man, yeah, right. <laughs> Even though if your pants are getting loose, it doesn't matter. You're still like looking in the mirror going, oh, geez. But with the imaging machine, uh, the 3D imaging, you can see it come off. It does inspire you to push a little bit harder because the faster you go, the harder you go, the more you go, the more you lose weight. As the first morbidly obese person who's ever been tested at the Human Performance Lab, I'm overwhelmed. 48.5% of my body is fat. All this weight put 720 pounds of pressure on my knees. A part of me wanted to give up. We're gonna put you into our Alter G treadmill. My last test is on this odd looking treadmill. It's gonna show me what it would feel like to weigh a lot less. Using air pressure, the plastic housing creates a seal that allows the air to lift me up and magically take the weight off my body. This is the first time that we've used it as a weight loss motivational tool. It's more of a rehab or a training tool that we use for our athletes here at Stanford. And go ahead and lock that other one down. Just press it down. Lock right. and load. So you're going to feel all the air coming in. You might even feel like it's going to lift you up a little bit. It's another Friday night in my life. <laughs> okay, whoa! That's interesting. It's nice and relaxed, and you're at 100% of your body weight. It feels pretty normal. Yeah. How's that feel? Wow. <laughs> Here you are now at working at 80% of your body weight. Okay. Going down one percentage point at a time. You're now at 28% reduced body weight, so or 100 pounds. This is what it would feel like to have 100 pounds taken off. Exactly. Wow, it's completely different. It's night and it's not even night and day. It's it's uh, January and June. I can even feel the pressure off my joints. What would I be like around 200? Ah, uh, let's see here. What's oh my that? God! I I want to run. You're at 50% of your body weight right now. Okay. Holy oh, God. It, it feels wonderful. It feels where I want to be. You know, I, I really don't want to go back to being my body weight again. Uh, wow. I remember this. I remember when I ran track. I remember having that bounce, that feel yeah. in my feet. I mean, I just feel more alive. This is one of the greatest, I love this machine. <laughs> and it's not just because it's lying to me. It's telling me what could be. It is telling it, you what can be. It's a powerful tool. Wow. So we're going to work our way back. Here's 80% of your body weight. Whoa. 
Oh, what just wow. happened is I just added 10%. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God. You're at 92% of your body weight now. You're starting to breathe heavy already. Yeah. So this is what you are experiencing on day-to-day -day life. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> and now, you're at body weight. True body weight. Sorry. 100% of me. 100% of you. All right, I'm slowing you down, slowing you down, slowing you down. Damn. This is definitely an eye-opener. Pretty powerful. Yeah. How did I let myself get to this point? I couldn't tell you. I have a lot of work ahead of me. I have to do it for myself. I'm so shocked at what the Stanford test revealed that I have no other choice but to get fit or die. For the first time in 25 years, I've decided to work out. I found a trainer who's got a lot of experience with very overweight people like me, Sharice Griffin. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, uh, okay, cool. Have a seat. My plan for Frank is to definitely keep him challenged because a lot of times a morbidly obese person already in their mind has said, I cannot do this. Just think of me as your giant pumpkin and you can get to carve me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Body engineering. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to come right around the belly button. Okay. Okay. Woohoo. Okay, you do this. Yeah, here, give me a peck there. It's been a long time since a woman has put her arms around me. And now Sharice can't even do that. Once again, I'm embarrassed. We're looking at about 60 and a half. All right, so that's what we're working from. Okay. You ready to do this? Yeah, yeah. Squeeze it, tighten it. And right now, what I'm doing is just figuring out from a strength perspective and just seeing where you are right now. We're going to start turning you into a furnace. I need you to be a walking furnace, OK? Back when I was wrestling in high school, I could probably bench press around 250 pounds. Now I'm lucky if I bench press 80. I had a major concern that my body wasn't going to be able to take it. I like the fact that you used to be an athlete, so you understand discipline. You understand muscles. So I'm just going to reawaken your body. I didn't want to fail. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what the next thing was. The treadmill is going to be one of your best friends, one of them, besides me. The key with us, Frank, is always going to be challenge, challenge, challenge. I just don't want to give up on myself because I gave up on myself for the last 20, 25 years. He's going to be successful. If I have to say, get your hiney in gear immediately, right now, because I know you can do it, dig deep within, I will. Get your posture together. Pull yourself upright. It is going to be a slow process because at his level, being morbidly obese, it's definitely one baby step at a time. Mm-hmm. Good. Pull that belly button in. Pull it in. First time I ever had a trainer. If I went to the gym myself, I would have beat myself to heck and not shown up ever again. It helps to talk to someone who understands what I'm going through. Because right now, I'm having trouble. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hi, I'm Jeff. Jeff? Hey, Jim, how you doing? Identical twins, Jeff and Jim Thiel, lost nearly 100 pounds each on last year's National Body Challenge. At the start, Jim weighed 344 pounds, and Jeff was 296. And like me, they loved. Pizza, cannolis, sausage parmesan, ice cream. But they had it worse. They run their own Italian restaurant in Eagle Rock, California, so they're surrounded by temptation. The twins were in trouble. They both had high cholesterol, and Jim was diabetic. This is not about losing weight to look better. This isn't that kind of a challenge. They understand that they really have to take it seriously. They started eating better with a little help from the National Body Challenge crew. It wasn't easy. Some pork sausage. This is definitely going to go in the trash. But they went to work. All right, man, we've got a lot of work for us to do today. All right. All right. Jim and Jeff lost more than 60 pounds each during the 15 weeks. The surprise was that we did so well. So well that we could yeah. lose that much weight in such a short time. Yeah, we were surprised. I we, was surprised. I was, too. I couldn't believe it. It was almost like a dream. I thought it was going to end. But what's even more impressive is that they didn't stop losing weight once the cameras went away. Today, Jim's down to 241, a total loss of 103 pounds. And Jeff is at 201, 95 pounds lighter. Did you have this goal in mind? Realistically, we didn't think we were going to get this this far, but this we knew far. we had to lose. I had to lose the weight. It wasn't a maybe or, oh, we'll see how far we go. Life or death. Yeah. yeah. Both mom and dad said, you know what? We want 
we want you to outlive us, and the way you're going, you're not gonna do it. After the body challenge, and you lost a, you know, a huge amount of weight, and you kept going, how were you able to do that with no cameras, no support? Exercise. We work out with our trainer twice a week, and then we go work out on our own. Yeah. I go for a walk at lunchtime. Blood pressure is down. Yeah, blood pressure is good. good. My blood sugar level is good, and my cholesterol is good. Now the only problem is I'm getting aches and pains from doing all the physical activity. Yeah. Has that changed anything with, with the way you eat here, the way you do your menu, or anything like that? It does. In fact, it, it has. we'll show you. Uh, there you go. Whole wheat pizza and pasta. Yep. Turkey sausage in an Italian restaurant. Yeah. Yep. yep. If you're going to have a pizza, you got to have, have sausage. sausage. We're going to make you a healthy, low fat twins pizza. Yes. Here's their secret really thin whole wheat crust, a light sprinkling of low fat cheese lean turkey sausage, peppers and mushrooms. At 200 calories a slice, it's a low-fat delight. Mmm, fantastic. Guys, excellent, excellent. Nicely done. Thank you. Perfect. I've been working with Cherise for an intense month and a half. Ah, it's... But today, an old knee injury flared up, and now I'm in big trouble. I can't get out of bed. My knee is killing me. I feel like there's a knife in there and it's just being twisted back and forth. This weight has taken a bigger toll on my body than I realized. I need to figure out what my other options are. I've heard about bariatric surgery, the procedure where a surgeon makes your stomach smaller so you can't eat so much. I'm not big on surgery. I'm actually kind of afraid of it. But at this point, a quicker fix is worth checking out. Today. I'm going to UC Irvine to meet with top bariatric surgeon, Dr. Nguyen. Essentially, your stomach can actually hold approximately a liter to 1.5 liters of liquid or solid. Gastric bypass is an operation whereby we construct a very small stomach, a pouch that can only hold approximately 30 cc's. So it's tremendously less. Once we construct that pouch, we take the small bowel and route it and connect it to the pouch. This is actually an x-ray of a patient who just recently had a gastric bypass. And this pouch holds approximately an ounce. An ounce, one That's ounce. Correct. And immediately from the pouch, it drains into the small intestine. So that is your new pouch if you decide to undergo a gastric bypass. How much do you lose when you get a gastric bypass if you're only able to put an ounce of your, uh, in your body? 65 to 70% of your excess weight. So for example, if you're 100 pounds overweight, after about one year, we expect you to lose approximately 65 or 70 pounds. Wow, that's small. I know. All right, if you don't have any uh, further question, why don't we just take a walk over the surgical suite, and I'll show you where we do our work. Great, I'd love to see okay. that. OK. I'm ready, Doc. All right, let's go in the operating room. <sighs> why don't you have a seat? OK. I'm not too comfortable in these. Uh... I know, I can under totally understand. OK. We perform all these operations through small incision. I don't want to scare you or nothing, but we use instrumentation like these to go through there instead of using my hand. Well, how would that go inside me? Through a little port. We call it a trocar. The first thing we'll do is we'll insufflate, meaning blow up your abdomen. You will look like the mission and man. <laughs> I already do. <laughs> we'll go ahead and place the trocar in just like this, and we'll just again. go ahead and penetrate directly through your skin okay. into your abdominal cavity. To see what I'm doing, we use a bigger trocar, and what we have here is a high-definition camera where we actually place through the trocar into your abdomen, and I can actually visualize your internal organs. I notice these things are slowly but surely getting bigger and pointier. <laughs> yes, it is. Another instrument that we use is a stapler, where we actually can cut and staple the intestine. Oh, wow. Yeah, it makes the operation very quick. Another instrument that we commonly use is a needle holder, and this is used to re really stitch your intestine together. So you're, you're actually sewing up my insides. That's exactly. Oof. We staple first, and then we also sew at certain spot of the intestine. So we wouldn't have any leakage, I That's think. correct. We prevent leakage. Oh, so you'd have, the, you'd have the camera in there. You'd have that in there. That's correct. What else would be in there? 
There's also a liver retractor. Sounds huge. The liver sits directly on top of your stomach, and we have to retract the liver in order for us to see the stomach. When we actually go inside the abdominal cavity, we actually go ahead and tighten it, and it form a rigid retractor. We'll take this retractor and retract your liver away. OK. Mm. Am I a good candidate for this? You have high blood pressure, gastroesophageal reflux, and you've been struggling with weight loss for many years now. I think you will really benefit from weight loss surgery. Well, I got to give some thought to this. I mean, this is a big decision I can't really make right no, now. I agree. OK, I'll have to call my parents. Because right. <laughs> I can't make a decision like this without talking to them. This is pretty fascinating and amazing stuff. The possibilities are just fantastic. But it is major surgery, so I have to give it some serious thought. Learning about my body has been overwhelming. I like the idea of bariatric surgery for faster weight loss, but I'm too afraid of surgery to go through with it. So I'm back to diet and exercise. In three months, I've lost 60 pounds. I was lucky to be invited back to Stanford's Elite Human Performance Lab to find out if even 60 pounds makes a difference on a body as big as mine. The body fat test has me pretty nervous, you know, because when it comes to just measuring your body fat, those numbers don't lie. Looking good, looking like the exercise is paying off. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited, uh, highly energetic. When Frank came in three months ago, his body was not allowing his skeleton to rest easily due to fat mass in the torso, fat mass on the inner thigh. Beyond pounds, this DEXA machine will tell me the exact amount of fat I've dropped. Today we're seeing something a little bit different. Your shoulders look a lot more relaxed, a little bit slimmer profile. It's looking a lot more like a normal skeleton. And if you recall, you were at 48.5% pure fat. So three months ago, you came in here, could barely fit you on the table. Today, almost 10% lower, 38.6. 38.6? Yeah. 38 yeah. Okay, I'll take that. That's, yeah. that's not bad. I've been working pretty hard to knock this weight off. I've been doing two-hour workouts, and, uh, and it paid off. Next, the Vicon system details how my bones, joints, and muscles have responded to the weight loss. Hey, Frank, you're looking great. Ah, thank you. I felt pretty good that everyone noticed that there was a significant difference in my body, my face. They'd come up and start smiling right away because they, they were happy for me, and that was nice. With a 60-pound loss in weight, we'd expect those stresses to be about 20% less as well since you've lost that much body mass. What we want to do is compare what is the effect of his movement patterns and the forces through his joints as he's lost 60 pounds. So we can actually check if your natural walking speed is faster than what it was before. Once again, I'm lit up like a Christmas tree. I caught a fish this big. <laughs> With every step that Frank takes, he's putting less load on his joints, so he can probably take many more steps. I'm walking. Before, my arms were further out. The way I was walking, I was lumbering. It wasn't a pretty sight. I've surpassed that. Even though I still have a lot of weight to lose, I've taken pressure off my joints with just a 60-pound loss. I was out of breath last time doing this. Just walk, yeah, just walking back and forth. And now? I feel great. Good. Well, we'll get you running soon. Ooh. What I've done here is I've pulled up the data from three months ago, and this is you walking at a normal speed. Before, your stride was shorter, uh, you walked slightly slower, and your stride width was further apart. The changes that we'll see are changes in the forces in his joints. If you're carrying less weight, less mass, you would expect those forces to be reduced. Now your stride length has increased, your stride width has decreased. You have less side-to-side -side rotation and less sway in the frontal plane. So basically you're just telling me I'm lighter on my feet. This is a very sophisticated <laughs> way of showing it. <laughs> Noticeably, he's lost a lot of weight. He seems to be moving around much more easily. He looks uh, a different man. The final test is the hardest. Measuring how my body utilizes oxygen, the VO2 max pushed me to the edge in just seven minutes last time. Here we go. Increasing the gradient. We're at 2% grade, about three and a half miles per hour. So you're actually going a little bit quicker. Increase that hill. Still feels pretty good. I'm not breathing too heavy yet. Can you feel the difference now between the last time when you were 60 pounds heavier? Definitely. I feel it in the legs. The legs are they're stronger and they're carrying less weight. 
All right, we're at 4% grade, three and a half miles per hour. Looking good. Last time I was in such horrible shape. I was in pain, I was tired, I was sore. I think it's time for me to slow down. All right, we're gonna stop right there. I couldn't go anymore. This time, just caught my breath and I felt great. All right, Frank, let's get those arms moving. Charge up that hill. You're at 7% grade, four miles per hour. Stay with it. We're cheering you on, buddy. Stay with it, stay with it. Use those arms, use those arms. Get up the hill. They put me at, I believe, 8.5 was the incline, uh, which is pretty steep. It actually felt like a beginning to a workout. I was just warmed up. I was ready to do more. Good job, Frank. You're doing well. Phil and Dr. Matheson were cheering me on, which is kind of funny. Yeah, you know, it was neat. 10 seconds. Come on. Stay with it. <sighs> All right. Nice job. Bringing you down. 11 minutes. Your fitness level is up because you've got more muscle, you're extracting more oxygen in the muscle, and you've lost body fat. So this test is a great improvement. Good job. Last time I was all, oh. <laughs> <laughs> This time I'm, uh, I'm actually able to talk and, yeah. and uh, make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. The thing I noticed most about Frank was he really looked different. And before, he looked a little beaten down, and his shoulders were rounded, and his weight was carried forward, and he kind of trooped from place to place. And now, he just has more energy. Through today's assessment, comparing it to the baseline three months ago, exercise time was increased nearly 50%. You went from about seven minutes to nearly 11 minutes at a higher intensity, faster pace. Very good job. High five. All right. <laughs> Very well, man. <laughs> The best thing I saw today was that Frank just seemed more alive. I think he's turned a corner. I just see a motivation in Frank that I didn't see before. When I first came to Stanford, I didn't like what I heard. Coming back from Stanford on this last trip, I was really encouraged by the success I made. Now that I've seen the difference that some weight loss can make, I'm not going to give up trying to lose more. I've come a long way since I used to tell my usual fat jokes three months and 60 pounds ago. How have you been? Uh, fantastic. Good. A couple changes. Good, yeah, I can tell. Yeah. Oh, good to see you, Frank. Gotta talk to you later. I do feel great, and I know I look better. It wasn't just the weight. I, I lost hope. I made changes that have not only changed my life so far, but they've saved my life. These three months have been one of the best times of my life. I've lost over 60 pounds. I'm going to lose 80 more at least. And uh, I, I hope the next time you see me on TV, you see less of me.